Good morning. Welcome. Now everybody's over here. You're going to make my neck hurt. <clears throat> when you came in, you should have been given a program. Inside that program are a couple of things. First is the ascent card. Take a second, fill that out. The other is the uh, offering envelope. Um, if you've come prepared this morning to give an offering, you can use that and place both the um, envelope and uh, the card in the wooden box out there. The other thing I want to point out is this faith and blue sheet. We need help <coughs> on the 17th <coughs> from 11 to 2. We are doing a booth down at the Pioneer Park and we're going to have some games for the kids and uh, it'll be a fun time. So if you're interested in doing that, talk to Jolene. She didn't know I did that, but I just did. I knew that was coming when you were saying that. I was like, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> so if you're interested in helping out down there, it's just uh, running some games and giving away prizes to kids. It's going to be a pretty good time. Why did you keep me informed what we're doing? Because I have no idea. Oh, I have no idea what we're doing either. I thought you did. Yeah, um, so, hey. <laughs> and Jeannie and Chad and the girls and Ron Lee and Steve are going to be playing. Yes. There at the, at the park. Yes. So that'll be a fun time. So come in and run the booth and enjoy the music, and uh, um, it'll be a good time. Also, on the 18th, we'll be having church service down at the park with the Faith and Blue um, rally. Um, everybody online, it's great to have you here today. Let us know you're here by commenting down below. Let us, I'd love to see your names and see who's, who's here joining us. If you have come today and you want to give as part of your worship, you can go to ascentcc.com forward slash giving and you can, it takes you to a nice secure website where you can give that way. Um, you are also invited to the Faith in Blue Rally on August 17th and 18th. Um, 11 to 2, we'll be down there doing the games. Come down and join us. It'll be a great time of fellowship and reaching out into the community. With that being said, we are continuing our series on the on the Sermon on the Mount, and we've kind of turned a corner here because we finished up the Beatitudes last week, um, and we're turning a corner. And today really isn't a Beatitude, but it kind of ties in with that because uh, we're going to be talking about salt and light, and uh, we are going to dig into that and what that looks like and what that means. So let's pray and we can, we can begin our, our teaching. Jesus, we come before you this morning and we just, we want to bow our hearts and our minds before you. We want to put away all the distractions in our lives, Lord, whether it be finances, family, or friends, or work, or whatever it is, Lord. I just pray that we can put those distractions behind us and we can focus on you this morning. Uh, we love you, we, we, we worship you, and we want to dedicate this time to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever, I don't know if I can pronounce the right word, but have you ever gone deep down into a cave? What's that word? Something like that. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. So... <laughs> But when you get down in there, it's really dark, isn't it? I took uh, my kids over to, the, to Bend, I think, Lapine, I don't know, somewhere down over in there, big cave. And we walked probably a mile or two down into the cave, and it was dark. And we got down at the very bottom, and we turned off all of our flashlights, and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face, almost to the point <clears throat> I had to make sure I was holding on to some of my kids because when the lights went out and it was so dark, they were like losing their balance. So we're going to be talking about what it looks like being light in the world and co contrasting that with the darkness. So we all kind of understand what that darkness looks like in a cave. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, we are in Matthew 5, chapter, thir or chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. So if you have your Bibles, would you open those up there? Um, Jesus talks about the Beatitudes and what the, character what the normal characteristics are 
for being a Christian. So we've talked about various things like um, be blessed are those who are persecuted, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, the merciful, the meek, all these different things. And those are kind of normal characteristics that uh, Christians have. Those are what the kingdom looks like. Those are normal attributes in the kingdom of God. And right after Jesus finishes that section on the Beatitudes, he goes right into, you are the salt of the earth, but, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all of the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So, <clears throat> we're talking about salt and light today. And <clears throat> when we think of salt, and salt and light, those are um, kind of indispensable household items, right? Commodities, right? Anybody live here in the dark? We did a few weeks ago when the power went out, but normally we have light in our house. It makes life easier. And I will bet you if I go to any of your houses, I'm going to find some kind of salt in one way, shape, or form. Um, we are talking about um, saltiness here, like the taste of salt. But did you know that salt is used in so many different things? It's used as preservatives. It's used as um, a, a flavor um, enhancer, I guess you would call it. But it's in so many different things. If you have contacts, that solution, that, that saline, it's salt. I mean, it's used for so many different things. It's used to disinfect. It's used to preserve. Um, back in before refrigerators and things like that, they used salt to preserve meat so that it didn't spoil. Um, salt is a, something that is very important. So I have a couple of observations here. Um, the first one was, I'll be able to find it in all of your houses, I'm sure. And then the second observation is when the first century Jew heard this, they likely heard salt of earth, which is the land, and the light of the world to nations. So what that means is they viewed themselves as the salt of the earth because they were God's people. And Jesus, they viewed it as Jesus is talking to them of being salt and being part of the Jewish nation. And when he goes on to say light of the world, they were the light of the world to the Gentiles. So there was a distinction there. So in the first century, when the Jews heard this, you were the salt of the earth. They were the blessed God's people. All right. And they were to um, encourage each other and they were to be light to the Gentiles who were outside of, of that, um, that nation. All right, so you are the salt of the earth. What does the salt, salt mean? The salt in the, in the ancient world, salt was used primarily to prevent food from decaying, but it was also used, for, used medically and for <laughs> religious purposes. Remember, salt is a disinfectant, right? So that is part of what they use salt for. That was a medical um, issue it was used in religious purposes for cleansing, uh, used to prevent food from going bad. And <clears throat> how many here, before you taste food, put salt on it? Before you taste it. Before you taste it. <laughs> you cook with it. But I don't add it. Okay. <laughs> I have seen people go out to eat or to people's houses and they get their food and the first thing they do is grab the salt and put salt on it. And they won't even eat it before they put salt on it. I've also seen people who ask for salt and pepper and if you hand them the pepper first, they'll hold it and wait for the salt and salt and then pepper their food. So that's the order it's supposed to go. That's the order it's supposed to go. So. So it's, 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 that's what the salt is that we're talking about. In the Latin, uh, the, salt, the word salt is salarium, mm. is the root word for salary. 
and or salt or money all right so <clears throat> in doing the research it was interesting that this word salt was for salary because some Roman soldiers because salt was such a precious commodity a precious thing some Roman soldiers got paid with salt so when he start talking this Latin word salary and it's interesting because you go back and some of the Roman soldiers were actually paid in salt. All right. Salt has many uses. It's a preservative. It's it a, has a penetrating quality. That's when you preserve the meat. It penetrates in. Um, it's purifying. It makes things palatable. And so <clears throat> thinking through this, the salt of the earth and Christianity. All right. We... <clears throat> we think about being salt and light and going through and thinking about things that Christianity has brought to the world. Um, we can look at, we the Christians have built hospitals, schools, orphanages, rescue missions. There's been legislation based on the moral Christianity. Um, there is medicine, churches, colleges, universities, benevolent institutions, our civil liberties, modern science, um, the sacredness of human life, um, we are still battling that on many fronts, but uh, we are, are, are constantly battling that. Um, development of art and music, elevation of justice, and probably most importantly, is salvation. All right, so being a salt of the earth means doing these kind of things, right? Being a salt and light is doing these kind of things. And Christianity, um, Jesus has told us, we are to be the salt of the earth. And if salt loses its taste, it is no longer good for anything except for thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Can salt lose its taste? There has been research done, and people have tried to prove this wrong, that this scripture isn't right. Um, salt doesn't necessarily lose its taste, but it can go stale and it can be polluted. Like if other things get in there, it can be polluted. It can be uh, not good as salt. So when we start thinking about this, if salt loses its taste, if it goes stale, or if something else gets in with it, what good is it? It's only worth being thrown out and trampled under people's feet. So we, as the salt of the earth, we need to make sure we maintain the purity of that salt. You follow what I'm saying? Maintain the purity of our lives so that um, our witness doesn't get thrown out and trampled under people's feet. So when Jesus is talking about this, if you lose your saltiness, if you lose the ability to be a witness to people because of poor choices or impure motives or thought, um, things that you have done and people have seen, your witness kind of goes out the window. Your testimony kind of goes out the window because of your attitude or actions that you... Impure motives. Does that make sense? Do you follow me with that? Tasker says, Christians are to be the moral disinfectant to the world where moral standards are low, constantly changing or non-existent. So when we start talking about this word salt and being a disinfectant, we are to be the moral majority. Do you understand what I'm saying? The moral majority. We are to be the disinfectant to the world. And if we are to be the disinfectant for the worldliness, how can we do that and just stay in our little church building or in our own little circles. We have to stand up for what is right. We have to stand up for the truth. We have to get out of our comfort zone and share the truth. Share the truth of who Jesus is and let people know that Jesus is the only way. So this word light I find this one interesting too. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. 
A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. In the same way, your light must shine before others. So it's kind of like being down in that cave. If you shut off all the flashlights and you are surrounded by darkness, and you were to take a match and light a match down there. Have you ever done this? Light a match down there. How amazing is it how much light that little match can give off? Now, let's take that into um, we are the light of the world. Our little match, our little light, when we combine it with others, how much brighter does that light get? We are to work together to be the light of the world, to share Jesus with those in the world. Everybody following me? Some observations. Jesus is the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So our light is to reflect Jesus. Jesus is light. You follow that? So it's kind of like the sun and the moon. Does the moon have its own light source? But it reflects the sun, right? So we are to reflect the sun, Jesus, right? We are to reflect his light on the world. And that's how we are to be a light to others. Um, we are in a world that is shrouded in dark, that, the word darkness there, I don't know why the thing didn't get in there. So we live in a world that is dark. We live in a world of darkness. And I think that, <clears throat> I think that we can see it every day. Um, I know recently there was some controversy at the Olympics. I still haven't seen it. Um, but uh, everybody is up in arms over the opening ceremonies which is interesting because this is a secular show, a secular thing, and why, I'm not sure why we were so surprised that this happened, because we live in a dark world. Um, yeah, I don't like the idea of it, but maybe this can open some conversations to share the light of Jesus with others. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. So instead of us getting all angry and up in arms about it, let's try and open some conversations and be the light. Be the salt and the light of the world and share Jesus. On the flip side of that, it's not just Christians that were upset about it. The I saw on the news, Samsung's like pulling like $7 billion worth of advertising from the Olympics and they're not a Christian company which I, I was honestly that floored me more than seeing the <laughs> hearing and seeing what happened at the opening ceremony but we are to be salt and light we are to be salt and light to <coughs> all the different cultures that we have around us we are to be salt and light to all the all the generations all the there's another G word I can't think of. We are to be salt and light to everyone, which is telling them that, you know what? This is the truth. Jesus loves you. You can say whatever you want, but Jesus loves you and he wants you to be his child. And I think that with all the controversy happening at the Olympics and all of that, I think that's where we need to land. Yeah, it's an opportunity. That's where we need to land is being salt and light like Jesus has told us to be to the world. We are to be that preservative of Christianity, of Jesus, and we are to let that salt penetrate into people's lives so they can be preserved, right? We are to be the disinfectant to the moral culture. In Ephesians, for at one time you were in you were darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all the good and right and true. 
and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And Jesus goes on, he says, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Do not, uh, so that they may see the good works and give God, sorry, different version, give glory to the, your Father who is in heaven. That's a difficult thing to change translations from what you've learned in the past to, <clears throat> sorry about that, that's just like an offshoot here. Um, but in the same way, let your light shine before others so that God can have the glory. Right? When we share Jesus, we want to give the glory to God. When we do things in the name of Jesus, we are giving God the glory. When we are helping others instead of putting them down, we are taking care of others instead of walking away from them. We are doing that in the name of Jesus, and we want God's name to be glorified. Amen? Amen. Stott writes this, Transformed men need to be the light of the world. So if we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, as Romans says. We have come to Jesus, we have given our life to Christ, and we are transformed into his child. We are to be the light of the world. There is a responsibility that we have to share what has been given to us. Amen? Letting your light shine, what does it look like? Working hard rather than being lazy on the job. Have you ever seen people like that? They go to work, they're getting paid, and it's not so much work. <laughs> I know in construction it's like this. Am I right? I don't know about anywhere else. I know in construction it's like this. There are people that will show up, and basically they're just collecting a paycheck. And honestly, you have to end up covering for them to get the job done. I, I don't, I've had numerous issues like that. Um, Lending a helping hand when someone is struggling. I see this more and more. Um, but lending a helping hand when someone is struggling, that is how you are the light of the world. Um, speaking an encouraging word to the troubled. Coming to the aid of the downtrodden or rejected. And we've talked about this before in the Beatitudes. Is our attitudes towards people that culture steams unworthy. We are to give them aid. We are to encourage them. We are to help them. Um, speaking honestly to avert falsehood. Showing genuine concern for the plight of others. Standing firm when everyone else bends. Being faithful when everyone else is unfaithful. Sharing a compliment rather than a complaint. That's hard to do for some people, right? That's hard to do for us sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes it takes some time to think of a compliment. Am I right? Yep. But instead of complaining about it, I think it's important that we think, have our mind in that state where we are complimenting instead of criticizing. John Stott goes on and says, God intends the most powerful of all restraints within the sinful society to be his own redeemed, regenerated, and righteous people. He intends us to be the one that spreads the gospel. We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we rely on the Holy Spirit to do the conviction and to break the hearts of people, but we are to share the name of Jesus. We are to let people know who Jesus is, what Jesus has done for us, and how much better life is with Jesus than without, and let the Holy Spirit work in their life. Amen? We are not to convict them. That's not our job. Our job is to share Jesus, share the gospel. Here's some application here. There must be a fundamental difference between Christians, the church, and the world around us. There is a fundamental difference between Christians, and the church, and the world around us. I know there's churches out there that claim to be Christian, but when you look at them, it looks like they're molding and, and growing into a worldly entity. We are not to be doing that. 
We are not to let the world influence us. We are supposed to influence the world. We stand on the truth of God, and that is how we as a church and Christians are to shine the light. That is how we are to be the salt and the light to the world, is we stand on the truth of the Word of God. And we take it as the truth. We don't let the world come in and influence little pieces of it to let it fit or be um, more accepting to our culture. But we are to stand on the Word of God. We are to stand behind that and let people know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And what the Word of God says is the Word of God. And we let that influence our world. We let that influence our culture. And as a church, we preach the Word of God and nothing more. Amen? Amen. Sorry, I feel like I'm getting on a soapbox. <laughs> Chesterton says, we do all... We do not want the church that will be moved by the world. We want a church that will move the world. That is what I'm saying, is we are to be the leaders in the world culture. We are to be the disinfectant for the world morality. And we are to show people how to live, who we are living for, and that is how we are salt and light. So application. Christians must accept the responsibility of being salt and light. We must not conceal our witness by sin, compromise, laziness, or fear. Think about that a little bit. We are not to conceal our witness by sin, compromise, laziness, and I think this last one is very important, or fear. I know a lot of people are afraid to speak up about their faith at different times. I know a lot of people are not worried about speaking up about their faith, and I would say that's the part of laziness, but the fear is we're worried about what people will think of us when we start talking about Christianity and we start talking about Jesus and everything that he has done. But Christians must not accept, must accept the responsibility of being salt and light. Jesus says we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are reflecting him. So we must not conceal our witness. We must exert this double influence, being salt and being light. The end result is to bring blessing to ourselves, salvation to others, and glory to God. That is what being salt and light is. We are bringing a blessing on ourselves, salvation to others, and glory to God. Philippians says, do all things without grumbling or dis 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 disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. <clears throat> now remember, this was written back in the first century. <clears throat> the crooked and twisted generation. Can you see that today? Yes. The Word of God is living, and it is true, and it is right. <clears throat> Peter says, <clears throat> You are a chosen race, a royal priest, priesthood, a chosen, a holy nation of people for his own purpose, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called us out of that cave, that dark, dark cave, and he has called us into his marvelous light. He is the light of the world, and we are reflecting that light. Salt and light, we are to help stop the spread of evil while promoting the spread of truth, beauty, and goodness found in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are to be the salt and the light. And that's my prayer for this church, that we can be salt and light in Prineville, that that will be a rippling effect going out into the world. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Jesus, we come before you again this morning, and, and we want to thank you for your message 
of being salt and light. And we understand <clears throat> how you have explained that we are to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and we are to reflect you. We are to um, penetrate this darkness with your word and your, your love and your grace. Jesus, as we um, continue to digest this message, Lord, I just pray that you will work on our hearts. You will give us the boldness to talk about um, you and your gospel to people around us in our circles of influence, Lord. I just pray that you will um, give us the boldness to be salt and light in Prineville, Lord. And as we do that, we know that the Holy Spirit will be working on those people's lives as we share who you are. Lord, as we um, go from here, we just pray that you give us divine appointments that we can share that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. We come to communion today and we think about what Jesus did on that cross. He is the light of the world. And he came to this world so that we could see God. He came to this earth so that we could understand who God is. He came to this earth so that we can have forgiveness. And we can have an intimate relationship with God. So as we take communion today... Um, I encourage you to meditate on that. The bread representing his body and the juice representing his blood. Meditate on him hanging on that cross and what it means that he is the light of the world. He is the one that came to save us. He is the one who brings us salvation. And if he does that, can't we reflect that to others Jesus we want to take time and we remember you we remember what you did on that cross as we take communion this morning I just pray that you work on our hearts as we meditate on you pray this in Jesus name Amen <clears throat>